Does not commuting make up for all the great things that go into uh, being with your coworkers? Jay, do you think that that can be done and there's a new normal and we're never going back to people showing up in the office? Well, well look, Joe, the, the short answer is, is no. Um, we're talking today about back to school. I think we all know that uh, school uh, remotely didn't work very well. Uh, you can translate that to the office environment in many ways. One of them you just talked about was accountability and fairness. Do you feel do you feel as an employer like you have accountability? Do you feel as a fellow employee like there's fairness? But there are more important things than that, and, and that is that is the sense of a common mission. And I really believe that we did much better than expected going to remote work because we had built up goodwill in our large organizations over the years, and that people pitched in, had a common mission, shifted. Look, in 2020, March of 2020, when we all went home, and yet the markets functioned, something we all know well, that was the result of technology, but it was more the result of the goodwill and relationships that had been built up over the years. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Kevin, that's going to run out, all right? When these people, you know, are, are at home and, and there's no one minding the store, right? you, you, you really think saving a little commuting time makes up for, for people that are, I don't know, there's just no way you can be as productive if, if you're at home. You need a boss, Kevin. You need a tough taskmaster. Here's why that thinking isn't going to work. Um, you know, you think about good times, bad times, recession times, slow down in the economy. Companies are still pursuing the very best talent, <clears throat> excuse me, that they can get. And so at the end of the day, you have to ask that talent through your HR departments, what does it take to win you over? Good times, bad times. Let me walk you down the list right now of what's going on here and why I don't think it's going to change. Because I've got lots of HR people, lots of different companies, investments in all 11 sectors. And I just want to pause for one second before I shred Jay in this debate and say <laughs> thank you for your service. I, I worked under you in terms of being an issue of securities. You were the most pragmatic regulator we've ever had. Thank you very much. Now, having said that, back to work. I look <laughs> at this and say, let's get down the list, all right? Number one. And, I didn't make this stuff up. These are the top nine issues that we're facing trying to get people in. Number one, I don't want to increase the world's carbon footprint by commuting to work every day. Number two, I do not want to live and work in a high rise where the air is poison. That's new. We never used to hear that a couple of years ago, but that's probably COVID based. And it's true. Most of these high rise buildings have really crappy HVAC in them because they're really old. They've already proven, this is number three in the hit parade, that they can work remotely and productively and have been doing it for two and a half, three years. Number four, they're raising families and they want to do it in affordable communities, hundreds of miles away from HQ. And they're not, they don't want to change because they're getting great schools. And many, many, many members, you know, are working in other countries of these teams. Now, you can hire people in India, you can hire them in Dubai, you can hire them in Europe and still get productivity out of them. And then there's this whole thing about cities like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, L.A., their war zones. People don't want to go there and get their watch stolen or assaulted or whatever else. That just happened recently. You can't blame them. It's true. People are stealing watches in Los Angeles where I'm going this afternoon. I can't wear one anymore there. And, you know, frankly, they're not interested in paying the cost of commuting. And they even say lunch costs them an extra 150 to 200 bucks when they have to buy it downtown. They'd rather make it at home. What do you say to all of that? Because if you want to hire that person, You've got to give them answers to every one of them, starting right at the top with that carbon footprint thing. Brand new one, hard to dispute. Yeah, and Kevin, those things are, are things you cannot ignore, but you can't also ignore the fact that teamwork and being part of a team makes everyone better. And we've all seen that. I, I am lucky enough to look out over a trading floor where people have been in. You can see the buzz. You can see them working together. Now, are we going to go back to, you know, five days a week, 40, 50, 60, 70 hours in the office? I don't think so. But are we going to isolate from each other going forward? Definitely not. And, and I, I say this to, to, to people who are out there, young professionals. If you can do your job remote without interacting with other people, somebody can do it from somewhere else in the world where you don't have all the benefits that you have being here in America. 
And you got to think about that. I mean, right now, America is in the best possible position relative to the rest of the world. We responded the best to the pandemic. We have, you know, a lot of strengths that other places don't have, including energy and the like. If we go into a choppy time period, the leverage that employees have today, it kind of goes away. We're talking about very highly paid, highly skilled employees who are essential. But when things pull back, they're high cost. And I would caution particularly the young people who want to be professionals for the rest of their lives to get in, get mentorship. We have, we have an apprenticeship economy. You learn by watching people who do your job. And you learn very well. You better, provide, you better access that kind of opportunity. I know myself that I would not be nearly as successful, have as many opportunities, had I not had the opportunity to watch women and men who came before me.